What's going on y'all? Today we're going to be going over the basics of side scan, the best settings for side scan, how to know what you're looking at, read objects, how to find fish using your side scan, and basically just everything y'all need to know. Y'all, if this video is helpful to y'all, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button to get to see all of our future content. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so getting into the basics of side scan, First off, these images that you're going to be looking at are not my personal images. They're images that I grabbed from the web, but I feel like they provide you a pretty good representation of what's going on. So first off, um, the center beam that you're going to be seeing on your side stand is the path of your transducer. Okay, so that's exactly where your transducer is at. Uh, everything to the left of that is going to be the left side of your boat and everything to the right side of that is going to be the right side of your boat. Now, looking at this little black space that we have right here to your right and to your left, all that is is the space between your boat and the bottom. Okay, so that's going to basically be shooting a straight line down from your boat to the bottom. So whatever depth you're running, like right here, we're running 23.9 feet. If you notice up here on the range, we're running 23.9 feet. So that's 23.9 feet between the center beam and the bottom. Now, as you get shallower, that bottom is going to start to come in tighter. As you get deeper, that bottom is going to start to drift further away from it. So just know that as you're running, the deeper you get, the further this is going to become away from you. And the shallower you get, the closer it's going to come to you. And this black space just represents the space between the boat and the bottom. Now, with that being said, we kind of touched on this, but this is your range right here. You can go into your settings on your down scan and you can adjust your range to uh, focus in tighter. Maybe you want your range to only be 60 feet to where you're looking 60 feet to the right or 60 feet to the left. Or maybe you want to widen it out and make your range 120 feet to where you're reading 120 feet both to the right and the left. Uh, just know that when you're setting your range, the tighter your range is to your boat, the more defined and better uh, you're, you're going to be able to see things and the further your range is out, uh, the darker and kind of blurrier things are going to become and they're going to appear smaller uh, on your fish finder. So just know that um, although you know you can stand more water if you widen out to 120 feet or so, uh, but you might not be able to make out exactly what you're looking at. All right, so the next thing you need to understand about your side stand is your side stand is going to uh, portray things off to the right and the left um, in a very similar fashion in which like if you were to walk into a dark room with a flashlight and then you put the light onto objects, as you shine onto those objects, they're gonna cast a shadow behind them. Uh, you can kind of notice this rock right here. That light is being shined onto that rock. And although you can kind of barely make out the lines from that, what really lets us know that there's a rock right here or a structure is this black space behind it, right? That kind of marks that up. That lets us kind of know how tall that rock is, how big that rock is. Uh, and without that shadow, it's kind of hard to just make this little piece out. Um, but I'm going to move on to another image and uh, just kind of talk to y'all a little bit more about side stand, what we're looking at. And then uh, I will also show y'all what fish look like on side stand. All right, so we got image number two pulled up right here, and we're just going to look at it, identify several different things that we got going on in this image, uh, and give you all a couple of things to start looking for when you're running your side stand. Okay, so the most obvious thing that we got going on right here is this shipwreck, and you can make out a lot of the beams, uh, the mast, and, and this, that, and the other. So, um, you notice that you got this shipwreck and then you got the shadows coming off of the shipwreck right here, right? Okay. Um, the shadows give us a lot of information from 
this image. We got this shipwreck right here, but what the shadow does is tell us how far up that shipwreck wreck is sticking in the water column. Now we might not have an exact figure, but we can tell by how far the shadow is away from the shipwreck that this is sticking up a pretty good ways out of the water. Uh, the same thing with these shadows right here. We can tell that this is a pretty tall shipwreck. Um, same thing right here uh, with this. This is probably a piece that come off of the ship right here and you can see the shadow behind it kind of cast away and it lets us know uh, how far these things are sticking off of that structure okay so moving on over here now directly under our boat halfway through the water column before we got to the bottom our side scan picked up a bait ball a fish right and you can see this bait ball right here and if we look off to the right you're gonna see the shadows very faintly right in here okay that shadow is cast from that bait ball right there you can see that okay um, we also got maybe some trees it looks to me like it's it's some stumps trees something like that that you can tell from the shadow we got right there now these shadows are very very important because you're not always going to get a big shipwreck like this something like this is is pretty easy to make out without the shadows looking at that um, but when you're looking at smaller objects if you were to remove this shadow completely you probably would never even see this stump coming out of the water, or this stump right here, the same thing with that one, that one, and that one, all right? So that shadow keys us in to say, okay, there's something here, and the shadow gives us more information uh, than the actual object because we can't really make out a whole lot right there, but we can see that shadow, and we can tell that, okay, it's sticking up a couple of feet off of the bottom, and it might be a significant piece of structure um, the same thing goes right here looks like we might have a rock bed I could be wrong um, might have a rock bed or something like that but it's definitely a lot of rubble on the bottom of the water right here now if you take away all of those black objects right there all of those shadows you probably wouldn't be able to make out any of that and you would just, just stand right over the top of it. But it looks like a pretty good gravel bed, rock bed, um, a lot of debris on the bottom right there. So looking off to the left right here, you notice that you got a pretty dark little piece of land right there, right, piece of bottom. And to me, what I'm looking at there is we're running over that and scanning is this is a depression. Okay, so this is lower bottom than the rest of this area. This is kind of built up and you can see it sloping down. But this is kind of built up a little bit and this is a depression behind it. And the reason it's dark like that is because it wasn't the side scan was not able to scan that image because something was blocking it now the something that was blocking it was this mound that's built up right here same thing right here you can look off to the right you can notice that we got some sort of contour that's running right here this is built up and this is just a little bit lower than the rest Okay, so you can kind of make out, uh, we got us a depression starting to uh, shadow out right there. So it's a deeper piece of uh, bottom and so on and so forth. So you can kind of scan out and and look at your, uh, your bottom contours and, and kind of map out and know uh, what you got going on. Now, with that being said, if I'm running side scan and I run over something like this shipwreck, um, I'm definitely going to turn my down scan on. I'm going to come back over the top and I want to map over the top of that structure because that's going to be my easiest way to see whether or not there's fish in there, 
um, and, and really what's going on on this structure. So uh, as I run over all of this stuff right here, I'm going to set waypoints and then I'm going to run back over it with my down scan to get a good figure or a good mental image of what's underneath me. I can see whether or not there's fish hanging out around this structure because when you got a lot of debris like this in the water, it's really, really hard uh, to make out fish. Now, a couple of things we need to talk about as far as seeing clarity on your side stand. There are several things that are going to determine uh, your, your, how well you're able to see things off to your left and your right. Okay, um, one of the most important things is probably going to be your range. So you'll notice in this image they're looking 90 feet to the right, 90 feet to the left. Okay, so as I said before, if you tighten that range up, these images are going to become bigger, they're going to become more clear, and you're going to be able to see better. Okay, so if this was pushed out maybe 120, 140 feet, this shipwreck is going to appear a lot smaller um, because we're trying to stand more off to the right and left. And then you'll notice that a lot of this that's going to appear to your right and your left the further you go out in range is going to be a lot darker. Okay, so it is going to become harder to see. I would say 90 feet to the left, 90 feet to the right, anywhere between 60 and 90 is going to be perfect. That's where I would keep it. Um, another thing that's going to affect how well you're able to make out your, your items or objects that are on the bottom is your idle speed. The slower you go, the blurrier these objects are going to become. So if you're going one, one and a half mile per hour, um, these objects might become more distorted versus going three miles per hour or something like that. So uh, the faster you're kind of moving through, uh, the more clear your images are going to become on your side stand. So just keep that in mind that if you're going too slow, uh, these objects will be a little bit more distorted. Another thing that's going to affect is your hertz that you're running so you notice this is extremely clear well it's extremely clear because it's a 1200 kilohertz uh, is because it's set at 1200 kilohertz so if you're set at 800 megahertz or 600 or whatever your machine's able to read um, that could severely affect whether or not you're getting um, good clarity off to your left and your right uh, so, and then sometimes if your kilohertz are too high, maybe you're sitting here running 12 and all this is kind of washed out, it's real bright in here, um, you can take your kilohertz down maybe from 1200 to 800 and your image will then become a little bit easier to see. So it might be something you want to play with. Um, your fish finder should have a setting for you to go in and look at what your uh, your hertz are putting out and uh, if you need to make adjustments just just do so uh, another thing that's going to affect it is your sensitivity okay so you should have a setting on your fish finder to go in and adjust your sensitivity a lot of times I go fishing with people and I notice that this is just completely whitewashed I mean it's so bright right here and you really just can't make anything out well the sensitivity is too high. We need to lower that sensitivity to where it allows us to see this a little bit better and then it extends out throughout your image. Um, you know, if your sensitivity is too high, it's gonna pick up every bit of sediment, every bit of debris, anything in that water column, it's gonna pick it up and it's going to wash it out like you see this real, real bright structure right here, this wreck, as it shined down on it, it brightened all that up. Well, if you got a lot of debris in the water, all of this in between is going to be bright and washed out as well. So you want to make sure that you're playing with your sensitivity to get the best sensitivity possible. Now, the reason that sensitivity is kind of there, 
uh, for you to be able to to play around. Obviously, get getting a better image, but if you're in clear water lakes or um, places that does they don't have a whole lot of, of debris and sediment in the water, you can crank that sensitivity up all the way to where you can really see everything in the water and um, the, the littlest of fish is really going to pop on there and, and pop out. But if you're fishing in a place where you're getting a lot of, of murky water, a lot of debris, it's muddy, had a lot of rain in the area, you want to crank that sensitivity way down to where you're not seeing every bit of dirt and debris that's in that water column and you're only going to be lighting up um, things that have a, a things that are a little bit more dense all right so that is this image right here we're going to move on and now i'm going to show y'all or kind of give y'all an idea of what fish look like on side stand all right we got our third image pulled up right here and we're looking at it and you can see there's really no structure left and right but if you notice right here there is a huge school of fish and uh, if, if I could take a stab at it, I would say that these are Jack Crevel. I mean, you can see the fin coming up. Just look at the, the shadow and how defined that is. Now, with that being said, these are extremely big fish. I mean, if you've ever seen a Jack Crevel, they get huge. So there's no wonder that the shadows are coming up as, as big as they are. Um, and this is kind of an unrealistic image to look at. But if you were to see maybe a large school of bull reds or jacks or anything like that, you're going to see the shadows popping up like that. And you'll see. Now, these fish are suspended. And you can see, see these little whitewashed areas right here, real, real bright rice grain um, type deals. Those are the fish. And then cast off of that is their shadows. Okay, so that shadow might tell us how far they are off of the bottom, this, that, and the other. Um, but like I said, it's it's really an unrealistic uh, way to try to find fish, especially if you're looking for bass or you're looking for trout or anything like that. Um, we're going to open up some of our other images that we looked at and see if we can't identify some fish in those images. All right, so looking into this image right here, I'm gonna try to zoom in just a little bit. Um, this right here could be a fish, and the reason that I think that this might be a fish is because I can see a shadow coming off right here, and then I see the kind of brightened up area right there, which tells me that that's possibly something that's suspending off of the bottom because I got good bottom right here, a lit up area, and then a shadow. Okay, so that tells me, yeah, that might be a fish sitting right there. Um, this right here looks like it could be a fish because I got shadow underneath it, a little bit of separation, and then I got a nice um, little area that looks like it could be a fish. Same thing, all of these brightened up areas in this dark spot, those could be fish right there. Um, see this little round shadow right there that could be a fish so basically you're you're looking for small dots that are isolated away that cast a a shadow behind them um and then basically so you can see like this is a tree right here and we can tell you got a kind of your shadow coming off right here but the shadow is touching the structure right same thing with all of this. The shadow is touching the structure. But with this right here, the shadow does not touch the structure. Same thing, there's one right here. All right. So that's a way you can kind of pick out fish. I will say that running side stand is the hardest way to try to find fish. Um, if I could pick any way to, to try to uh, locate fish on top of structure or out in water. It's going to be either running down stand or traditional 2D sonar. It's definitely not going to be side stand. But if you're running side stand and you happen to be coming across some structure and you see areas uh, like what we've pointed out, um, you can look for those and, and you know, kind of just fan out around those areas and see if you can pick up those fish. 
All right, y'all. So that's pretty much the basics of side stand right there. I hope it was helpful. I hope you found everything you were looking for in this video. If it was, make sure y'all hit that like button, comment with any questions, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see y'all next time.